The androids were defeated, but also spared. Raditz also might have discovered a new power, but it seems unobtainable for now. So where do the three Saiyan siblings go from here? We'll be covering all that more in the seventh part of What If Goku Had a Twin. Now we enter the time skip before the Buu Saga, and a lot of stuff does happen here. For one, obviously the cast is different, so things are going to change a lot. Mostly because of that. Goku and Chi Chi do have Goten, and I think Yamcha and Bulma might have a kid, probably still named Trunks as well because Bulma picked the name, although he's going to be fully human. As for Casa, she still isn't really going to be relevant here, but we will cover a little bit of what she does. She's kind of like a sister to Gohan and Goten. As for the actual trio of siblings, they all master Super Saiyan on their own at some point, with Gohan also following suit at some point. Of course, this means down the road, they unlock Super Saiyan 2 as well, but they're aiming way beyond that too. Right now, everyone is pretty much an even playing field. Goku, Ruda, and Raditz are equal by all accounts. But then, things start to shift in their training. After what Raditz did against the androids, Ruda and Goku decided that they're going to try and learn Grade 8 for themselves, because they never did get control on it. They still have their tails, and they could transform if they wanted, but there wasn't really a point up until now. It seems like Grade 8 actually is useful. So, they work on that. But they're not just solely training. They of course have their own lives. Goku did just have a new kid, and Ruda has her own to take care of as well. But they meet up a lot for training, which is nice because there was that period in time where Ruda didn't actually see Goku for a few years. And this was right before Raditz showed up as well. They hadn't seen him for decades. Now the three are pretty close, and they train a lot together. At one point during their training, something unexpected happens. The three of them are all sparring. But someone shows up and then yells out to Raditz. Goku and Ruda are immediately on guard because the person there is Android 18, and they're ready to fight her. They haven't seen the androids in a while. It seems like they've just been doing their own thing and not causing trouble, but maybe now they're trying to strike. Why is she alone though? And why now? And why is she specifically yelling out for Raditz? Raditz actually doesn't seem phased by this at all. While Goku and Ruda are ready to fight, Android 18 just calls Raditz an idiot. He never even told them, did he? Told them what? Oh yeah, he did forget. Raditz tells the two of them that they're dating now. Wait, him and Android 18? Who tried to kill them not too long ago? Well yeah, Raditz realized they have a lot in common. And not to mention, when Raditz first met Goku and Ruda, he did try to kill them too. That applies to a lot of their friends, actually. Anyways, Raditz actually ran into Android 18 at a bar he usually was at. The two androids were sort of outlaws now and just did their own thing. Android 17 went off to an island on his own, while Android 18 stayed pretty much in the mainland. She didn't even realize Raditz was at this place. And when the two ran into each other, it almost did break out into a fight, but of course they couldn't do that right in the bar. Raditz assumed that she was coming after him, but also he was a bit buzzed, so he was ready for a fight. But with him also being buzzed, he was a little bit more easygoing, and a little flirtatious. Surprisingly, it panned out. According to her, Raditz is actually really charming when he's drunk. That's weird, because when Goku and Ruta see him drinking, he's just kind of a brute. And a little stupid, but maybe that's just with them. If I had a nickel for every time Android 17 became Raditz' brother-in-law in What If, I'd have two nickels. It's not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. But yeah, that's the thing now. And I think some point later on in the time skip, they would get married. And that's the other pairing I was talking about. I mean, Krillin's taken, so these two end up getting together. Pretty much purely by chance. Goten and Kasa start training under Goku. As for Gohan, he did spend a lot of time training with Goku, Ruda, and Raditz. Raditz especially wants to see how far Hybrid Saiyan could go. But Gohan, of course, has kept up with his studying too, so he has that nice balance now. He ends up going to school like normal, and a lot of the Saiyan stuff happens pretty much like normal too. Krillin and Ruda have actually been living at Kame House this entire time. Unlike Goku, who basically lived off Ox King, the two need jobs now. And they want to get their own place instead of living at Kame House. Raditz actually ended up building his own home, and he became a carpenter on the side because he got some good money for it, and he was really good at what he does, especially with his speed and strength. He'd be doing small tasks, but also big ones like building entire buildings. And when Krillin and Ruta move out, he offers to build them a place for free. Well, they pay for materials. He'll just assemble them for free. Ruta's not really too sure, but Raditz ends up doing it, and he does it within a day. And it ends up being a really nice house, too. Ruta didn't really know what to think of it at first, but the build quality is actually amazing. Krillin can't believe it. Raditz is surprisingly a master of his craft and really creative. Seems like there's more about him they don't really know. Speaking of Krillin, what's been up with him? He never stopped training, but to make some money, he probably would become a cop like normal. As for Ruta, she doesn't really end up getting a job because by chance he found out about the 24th World Tournament, and she expected Goku and Raditz to show up, but neither seemed to know, which she feels kind of bad about she should have told them, but she guesses she was the only one who kept up with the info about it. And it's not really too fun, because she basically breezes her way through everything, except for the final match, where she's up against Mr. Satan. Mr. Satan offers to pay her to take the fall for this fight, so she ends up doing that. There's no point in winning this tournament anyways. Besides the money, which she didn't even realize before. She really lucked out here because she got the second place prize, as well as a portion of the first place prize that Mr. Satan had, which makes her a zenny millionaire. Mr. Satan gets to have his cake and eat it too, and he becomes the world champ and becomes famous. So the two of them have a pretty comfortable life right now. 
Rudy wonders why Chi-Chi never fights, though. It never really came to mind, but the more their kids interact, the more she sees Chi-Chi. She remembers Chi-Chi was a fighter her whole life, and Chi-Chi still is relatively strong, especially by human standards, but she just doesn't train herself anymore because she's focused on family. She actually does spar with Goku and her kids occasionally, too. Weirdly enough, Rudy didn't even realize that. It's not often, but still, more than none. While she's fine with Goku training the kids here and there, as long as they keep up with their studying, that's really all that matters to her. And it makes Ruta wonder. She's been pretty much the opposite. She's been like Goku. Funny enough, Krillin ends up being the more strict parent. She needs to ensure that her kid can grow up like Gohan, both being strong and being smart, succeeding at school and at fighting. Because despite all his weird experiences, Gohan turned out to be normal. Well, relatively normal. He's still half alien after all. And he's also freakishly powerful. Speaking of powerful, at some point during their training, Raditz does try to use the Golden Grade 8 form again. He waited until Ruta and Goku were able to use Super Saiyan 2, because he needed a little bit more firepower to assure that this could be stopped in case he does rampage. The three of them have Super Saiyan 2 by this point, so now is the best time. Once more, he creates an artificial moon, throws it up in the air, and transforms. With perfect control of Grade 8, he then goes Super Saiyan, taking on the same form as before, and he tries to maintain it. This time he doesn't instantly rampage, but he still loses himself a bit, although at some point he stops. While he's a great ape, he's conscious and in control. Second time's the charm, it seems. He remembers the last time he did it, he almost gained control, but Krillin stopped it at the last moment, which was probably the best option because Raditz didn't know if he ever would have gained control. This time around, though, he does gain control. And the moment he does, weirdly enough, he starts to shrink down. But he retains all the power that he had. Rudy and Goku are confused because he just detransformed out of nowhere. But then they get a better look at Raditz and see, he didn't detransform. He transformed. Like, he changed again. At first, Raditz didn't even realize what happened, but he feels the power coursing through him still, and he looks down at his arm. He freaks out a bit. There's all red fur on it. Why is he furry? As far as he can tell, he's a humanoid again, but that doesn't make sense. Goku and Ruta need him to get a better look. And inadvertently, Raditz did unlock a new form. He aimed to control Golden Great Ape, and he did, but the result was different than he expected. Of course, this form is Super Saiyan 4, and we're gonna call it Super Saiyan 4 because that's what it is. But it is worth noting that they wouldn't call it Super Saiyan 4. Maybe they would simply call it Great Ape Super Saiyan, or even Super Saiyan 3, because they don't have Super Saiyan 3 yet. So for the rest of this what if, we'll refer to it as Super Saiyan 4, but just know that they probably wouldn't know what that is. And he's elated. He got what he wanted, and then some. This also makes him the strongest of the three. It's partially because he had control of Great Ape prior to them, so he pulled this off easier than they could. It's still going to take a bit of work for the other two, but they of course still can do it, just not right now. Now we reach the end of the time skip when the tournament starts. Just as another side note, Cass is in the Junior Division, and I still don't have art of her because she won't really be too relevant in this part, although she'll have a design once we go into Super. The final of the Junior Division ends up being her versus Goten, and she ends up winning. As for the main tournament, Spokovich and Yamu are of course there, and same for Shin and Kibito. Their target is actually Goku this time, hoping to take his power or at least enrage Raditz and Ruta and take their power. So Goku ends up facing Kibito, and pretty much everything that happened with Gohan happens with him. Also, this is nice for Videl because she doesn't have to fight Spokovich. Anyways, once Spopovich and Yamu depart, the three siblings, the two Kais, as well as Gohan, Krillin, and Piccolo leave. It's a pretty big group going to stop Bobby. Shin and Kabito explain everything along the way as well. Of course, right when they get to his ship, they immediately encounter Deborah. Instead of remaining covert, Raditz thinks they should just head right in, which is really unlike him because he's usually the strategist, but in his eyes, he thinks they should stop this before it even starts. If they already got energy from Goku, they should prevent Bobby from being able to use it. They are spotted pretty much immediately though, and Root is the one who ends up fighting Deborah. It's a pretty short-lived fight, especially with Shin telling her to make it short, but Bobbity gets a little bit of energy from that fight as well. As they get closer, Bobbity starts panicking. He only has about 70% of the necessary energy, so he tries to possess someone. His main target's Raditz, because he seems the most likely to be possessed. Piccolo's there too as an option, but both have no reason to fall under his spell. They could resist it by default, and they're not going to have any reason to give in. Raditz isn't going to make it easy for Bobbity. In an act of desperation, as Raditz enters the ship, Bobbity sends all of his remaining minions after him, trying to restrain him, and Bobbity is able to steal a little bit of energy from him. Raditz breaks free, killing the rest of them, but Bobbity ends up escaping. And you know, Raditz still isn't too concerned. He welcomes Bobbity to use that energy. Go ahead, revive Boo. He already has the energy anyways. Raditz won't just stop him. He'll shatter his pride completely. Bobbity buys none of this, and Shin and Kibito tell him to not be so reckless. Even though it's not his fault, he shouldn't get too overconfident. Raditz says he's not overconfident. There's just no way that this Majin Buu creature will be able to defeat him. That sounds like overconfidence to them, but Goku and Ruta assure the two Kais that Raditz is right. Right now, he's the strongest of the three of them by a large margin, and they haven't even seen a fraction of Raditz's full power yet. With the remaining energy, Bobbity is able to revive Buu. Raditz wishes this could have been avoided, but he's not really too concerned. 
And for what it's worth, Raditz is actually the strongest here now. The two others are close to unlocking Super Saiyan 4, but they just haven't got it yet for the reasons I explained before. But after unlocking Super Saiyan 4 for himself, Raditz's power skyrocketed in training. In terms of the hierarchy, Raditz is the strongest, with Goku, Ruda, and Gohan being pretty much on equal footing behind him. Then there's another gap, with Krillin and Piccolo being equal. Thanks to Gohan's potential and the fact that he trains more than usual, he's not stronger than everyone else here, but he's on par with them, which is a pretty huge feat considering how strong they are. But the three siblings definitely have better experience than him. Anyways, Boo's revived. Goku's energy helped out, and of course Raditz did too. And Raditz asks his siblings if he could fight alone. He really wants to test this form out, and the best thing he could do is a 1v1. Shin and Kabito are confused. Can't they just transform into Super Saiyan 1 and 2? Nope, they actually have three other forms. Great Ape, Golden Great Ape, and then something even beyond that. Without even turning into a Great Ape, Raditz then starts to transform, showing off Super Saiyan 4 to Bobby and Boo. He doesn't have perfect control on this, it's fleeting right now, but he can still grow further and make this perfect. But more importantly, he could use this to fight Boo. Judging by Boo's power, Raditz is definitely the stronger one here. He dashes towards Boo, completely vanishing from sight, too fast for anyone else to even see. Boo himself has trouble keeping up as well. He lands a punch directly on Boo, and then follows up with a combo of attacks, actually taken from Goku, it's a meteor combination. His attacks have so much power behind them that they destroy Boo's body as he fights. He keeps regenerating, but Raditz keeps countering it, just getting a feel for how strong this guy really is. While this fight goes on, Goku decides to target Bobbity. He tries to defend against Goku, but Goku's attack is so strong that it just cuts through his barrier, and Bobbity's one shot. Ruta, Krillin, Piccolo, and Gohan watch from the sidelines. They didn't think they'd be needed in this fight, they really just wanted to see Raditz fight. He makes pretty quick work with Boo and finishes him off with his ultimate move. First, Raditz holds both hands out to each side of him. Energy swirls in each of his palms. One red and one purple. He then moves his arms in a circular motion, bringing them together, then coupling them in front of him like a Kamehameha. And with pretty much no other buildup, the blast immediately explodes out of his palms, with enough recoil to even throw him back. It's a swirling purple beam surrounded by red lightning. He calls this Fortnite. Yes, I used this name before, I like the name, I'm using it again. It's also kind of funny, you know, Fortnite? Of course I'm going to use it. Boo is killed by Fortnite. Completely decimated, there's no part of him left. Raditz then powers down. That was a pretty fun battle. Boo was a weaker opponent, but still, he actually gave him somewhat of a challenge. Any other opponent would have just died instantly if he wasn't holding back, and he wasn't holding back there. He was hoping Boo would be a bit more durable, but that's the closest thing to a full power battle that he had in a while, and the biggest challenge he's faced in a while too. Ruta and Goku really need to reach that level soon, and they hope Gohan joins them with that. That form is pretty cool, but it's kind of freaky. But yeah, maybe he can pursue it. As this fight happens, the tournament did continue, going into a battle royale. Android 18 did participate in the tournament too, and once more, Mr. Satan takes first place by paying off somebody else. Android 18 gets second place, but she gets a nice payday from Mr. Satan. So, Raditz comes back to the tournament, hearing that the two of them got some prize money. What a great day this is for him. He's at his peak in terms of power, he just defeated an incredibly powerful opponent, and his wife just won a bunch of money. This is amazing. And this is where we'll leave off for now. What do you guys think about this part, and what's going to happen next? Leave your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out the channel, and it shows me you want to see more videos like this. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.